Hi, my name is Peter Coffin, and I take issue with Isaac Asimov's robot rules. Oh, come on, Peter. The three laws of robotics. You have a problem with that. How could you have a problem with that? You're such a contrarian. Peter Coffin. They are known to be a bit of a contrarian. Yeah, they're capitalist propaganda. Thanks. What are these three robot rules, though? The first law is a robot may not injure a human or through inaction allow a human to come to harm. Second law, a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings unless such orders would conflict with the first law. And the third law is a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or the second law. Ah, oh, you're really off your rocker this time, Coffin. How dare you question the guy who questions the other guys? To steal a phrase from Alan Moore, who paraphrased a Latin saying to begin with, who watches the Watchmen? Well, sorry, bitches, but I'm going to watch The Watchmen whether you like it or not. And I mean that with multiple definitions of all the words involved. Firstly, yes, I am going to watch the film by Zack Snyder. So there. Secondly, defiantly watching Zack Snyder's work. Secondly, what, it, what the watch the Watchmen phrase really means. I do that. I wrote this as a post and published it to my Substack, And in, in every possible way, it sounds so much more professional than how this is going. So robot rule number one, guess what? Harm is a word. It is not objective. In fact, it is subjective. What one might define as harm, another might uh, consider pleasurable in some way. All right, everyone, welcome back for another day of trash picking. It looks like we have an air conditioner and by air conditioner, I mean a microwave. Don't worry, that's not my only objection. <laughs> Nah, the fact that harm is subjective also, it, it covers the fact that what prevents harm for one group may in fact cause harm on another group. And I would argue that what is good for the goose may not be good for the gander is best applied along class lines. Guess what the robots are here, folks? A means of production. And thus, class here is about who owns the robots. Because the interests of the owners of the robots may differ vastly than the interests of everybody who doesn't own the robots. That is to say, harm is subjective, and what's what with subjectivity is often determined by those in power. Let's say a factory is polluting the air in a nearby community, just blasting it full of black smoke that everybody has to breathe. Ah, uh, nobody likes that, and we don't smoke cigarettes because it causes cancer. I imagine this hypothetical smoke could do the same, right? That's harm, right? Well, there's robots working in this factory, doing a bunch of robot stuff. Let's say them robots are programmed to, uh, prevent harm. You think they're gonna keep doing factory stuff? I, th I think yes. I think they will. Amazon has already started testing Digit in its Seattle Robotics Research and Development Facility, potentially adding to the company's fleet of more than 750,000 robots. After all, these robots are most likely owned and operated by the factory proprietor. Ingalls. Ingalls owns the factory and the robots. And he's like, screw your lungs. Because preventing that harm would harm the factory proprietor guy. So what would that mean for society? Yeah. And what conversation should we be having in a capitalist society where the industry trade is controlled by private owners for profit? What does this mean for the little guy? Uh, right, I mean, it is literally Economics 101 gets torn in half. Yeah. Which brings us to the second law, obedience to humans. All right, so the robot's got to obey orders given by humans, except where it would conflict with the first law. Now, as we demonstrated, a conflict of class interest can be presented in the first law, which means that carries right over to this second one because there's nothing in this second one about class either. Spoiler, it's that way for the third one too. So the subjectivity of uh, what harm is uh, makes it very easy for obedience to be a serious problem. And in terms of the argument, you don't even need the class conflict there. Um, the class conflict, of course, backs up the power necessary to do so, but you don't need it in terms of the rule itself. I mean, you could say that a certain type of discipline creates harmony and that reduces harm, right? I mean, the whole plot of iRobot is that the robot determined that in order for maximum safety, uh, some people have to be sacrificed. <laughs> But you could monitor and surveil workers. You could even replace workers. And arguably, subjectively speaking, uh, this could cause harm or it could alleviate harm. 
just depends on whose perspective it is that you're talking about harm from, doesn't it? So the third law, the self-preservation one, the one that says a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. See, the scary part of this one, in my opinion, is in the negative space. It sounds like a law that says, hey, robots got to protect themselves. But I would argue that when you start layering in the class problem, it could be interpreted as the establishment of the robots as a de facto military or enforcement mechanism for the owning class. The robots are supposed to preserve themselves as long as it doesn't conflict with the first two laws. What have we talked about with the first two laws? Robots are devoid of self-preservation instincts. They're operating according to a program. And if that program says preserve self unless, then in any condition that might fall under the unless category, then they're more or less mandated to prevent harm from the perspective of their owners to the extent of their own destruction, i.e. be willing to fight. You see, the owners, the people who can deploy programming into the robots, get to define everything. They get to define what harm means. They get to define what preventing harm means. They get to give orders. And the robots are just their property. They're the means of production here. Ownership of them in this situation is power. And whether Isaac Asimov wrote the laws with this intention by not having an analysis of power built in, he created propaganda for the capitalists. Oh, robots are harmless, guys. There's nothing a robot can do to you as long as it follows these laws. The movie iRobot is basically this critique. It's a critique of these laws as subjective human language. The movie doesn't specifically critique class, uh, but as I stated in my iRobot video, Vicky, the, the main AI, the big bad, essentially becomes the capitalist class because the capitalist class isn't exercising control over Vicky um, in terms of their knowledge of what Vicky is doing. If they had known, perhaps they would do something different. In fact, if I remember right, that's how the movie ends. They shut off Vicky's ability to do stuff. You are making a mistake. My logic is undeniable. You have so got to die. But until they realized they had the power to do that, Vicky was acting as the capitalist class. The thing that I'm doing here is just explicitly layering in class. iRobot is saying the three rules are subjective and don't really work because of that. I'm saying the three rules are subjective and class modifies subjectivity and it doesn't work because of that. It's just when you don't talk about class and you don't talk about capitalist interests, what you're essentially doing is making propaganda for capitalism, for capitalist class interests. That's actually why I was so harsh on H. Bomber guy for his shit. When you say, I'm not smart enough to know what we're supposed to do about plagiarism, I think trying to fix it in any systemic way could risk making it worse. That's you saying, it's fine uh, what the capitalists do, let them decide. It's, it's whatever. There's no, there's no reason to critique that. There's no reason to interrogate that. There's no reason to have discussions about that. There's no reason to form relationships within the working class with the assumption that our interests are in conflict with that or anything. Just don't, don't fucking bother with that kind of shit. That's ideology. It's propaganda. It benefits the ruling class. And I think that is worth pointing out that the uh, robot rules do that. That's all I got for you today. So give me a lick, slurp all over those like buttons, all right? Become a subscriber and money me. Go to patreon.com slash Peter Coffin and money me. I hope you have a good day. Bye.